there are many, I say, quote unquote, religions in the world. We know that there is no uh, such thing as religion. It's just a word that we use to, to put, put a, a definition on a group of people and a belief. Uh, we all uh, basically... Well, we all either belong to God or we don't, right? We're either saved or we're unsaved. And uh, there, there really is, I, I hate to, when people ask me, oh, what religion are you? Well, we're not a religion. Uh, my dad said it often and I believe it. We, I, we are Christians, first of all. We're followers of Christ and we believe the Bible. We don't follow a, a necessary a religion or a religious group. I believe that when it comes down to brass tacks that we ought to follow the Bible uh, and, and God and his word. Uh, so, uh, but there are uh, a lot of religions, and uh, in this study, we're going to answer this question, don't all religions basically worship the same God? Now, I have to preface it by saying we are going to use the Bible as our main point of reference and our main point of study, and um, I believe that any, any study on the Bible or things of the Bible should be rooted and grounded in the Bible, and if you struggle with with that and you struggle with the simple fact that the Bible is the Word of God, then you're going to struggle with all of uh, the other things that we teach and preach here because we look at the Bible as the main uh, emphasis and the main uh, uh, answer. Uh, so uh, you have to, first of all, just this is just in general, in your Christian life, get nailed down that you're going to believe God and you're going to believe the Bible and take God at His Word. And once you get that nailed down and you decide, you know, no matter what, uh, the situation, no matter what the question is, uh, no matter what the promise, I am going to believe the Bible. Whether I like it or not, whether it's easy or not, uh, whether it you know, strokes me and fits my fancy, I'm just going to stick with the Bible. Once you get that settled in your life, a lot of other things are going to shake out and be okay. Uh, so we're going to use the Bible as our point of reference. We ought not to question the sincerity of those uh, who follow other religions. Uh, we, uh, there are many people who are sincerely uh, doing the best that they can, the best that they know how. Many people were raised in different churches, Catholics, Lutherans, you can name them all. And uh, they've never known anything else. They've never known any other teaching. And they're sincerely trying to do the best that they can with the information that they've been given. They're not bad people. They may be misguided. They may be unsaved. But we ought not to go around and just, you know, look down on people and, and, uh, and talk poorly about people who don't follow uh, what we know as the truth. We ought to, if anything, praise the Lord that we know uh, the way to heaven, that God has chosen to put us uh, in a family that teaches and preaches the Bible or, or had someone come across our path at a given time in our life that was able to give us the gospel and we were able to be saved. So we ought not to question people's sincerity. There are many people who are very sincere in what they believe. They may be sincerely wrong, but they're sincere and we ought not to, to, to look down on them uh, for that. But at the same time, we ought not to hesitate to correct and to help teach uh, that wrong belief. The answer, I'll give you right off the top, is an emphatic no. Not all religions basically worship the same God. That is, that is not true uh, at all. Uh, and what we will do throughout the rest of the message is systematically and biblically prove that. First of all, let's look at different systems of theology or theories of God. Different systems of theology or theories of God. I feel like I missed out a little bit in college because I, I, took a, I chose to take a teaching course, and uh, our Bible college was, was a great college. I would go there again if I could, but because of the, the course that I chose to take, I didn't get as much of these type of, of courses and lessons, and in some ways, I am learning. I'm kind of in my own Bible college and, uh, throughout the week, and, and I'm reading and studying and absorbing these things, uh, but I, I, as I'm learning, I want to share and, and, and so we can all learn together. So we're going to look first of all at, at different systems of theology or theories of God. One uh, would be deism. What is deism? It is a view that represents the universe as a self-sustained mechanism. It, a deism says that God is the maker, but he's not the sustainer. After what deism is, they believe that when God uh, created the earth, then he withdrew himself. And the earth has just gone on uh, as a self-sustaining uh, entity and whatever happens to it, happens to it. But God has no part in sustaining the earth or the life that's on it. We know, of course, that that is it's not biblical. It's not what we believe. Uh, another uh, system of theology is atheism. 
Uh, this may be a little more familiar to us. Uh, it, this view uh, excludes God altogether, denies God any existence at all. Another would be skepticism or infidelity. And that is simply a doubt or a disbelief in the existence of God, especially God of Revelation. Um, number four would be agnosticism. Agnosticism. This is a denial, they believe, really, that it's God cannot be known. They say there's a God, but we, he's not able to be touched or tangible in any way. We can't know him, what he wants for us, uh, if he loves us or not, if we're going to heaven and hell. If there is a heaven and hell, it's just God is a big mystery. And uh, we, of course, know, according to the Bible, that that is not, that it's not true. And uh, God, the Bible says that God loves us, uh, that he doesn't want any to perish. And there's so many things that we know about God that we don't know nearly uh, everything about God, but we do know some things about him. So that would be false. Agnosticism sim simply uh, denies that God can be known in any way. Pantheism. Pantheism. This view maintains that the universe in its ever-changing conditions is but a manifestation of the one ever-changing universal substance, which is God. So basically what they believe is everything is God, and God is everything. God, therefore, is necessary, but he's an unconscious force working in the world. And uh, in this theory of God, of pan pantheism, is simply um, the trees and, and the, the flowers and the world and the oceans. Everything is God, and God's important, but God's really, God's everything, everything's God, and uh, he really has no control over, over anything. A couple more. Uh, polytheism. Uh, if you know uh, poly, uh, polygon and multiple sides, this is the doctrine of many gods. Turn in your Bibles if you would. This verse came to my mind when I was studying through these. Acts chapter 17. This is a great verse. Acts chapter 17. Verse 23. Here in this chapter, we're going to see the Apostle Paul is in Athens. And the Apostle Paul is just kind of walking around and, and taking in some things and noticing some things. And in verse 23, he says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. The, uh, this area, they had a God for every day of the year. 365 gods, and they would worship the moon God and the sun God and the earth god, and every, every god. And then, in case they missed any gods, they just had this one, which was the unknown god. In case we missed any, we'll just throw them into this. this uh, and, and, and Paul said, I noticed that you have this to the unknown god. And here's what's, what's awesome about this. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. He said, you don't know who it is, but you worship him just in case you haven't found him, or you don't know who he is, and you don't want to anger him. Him, I declare to you. Paul used it as a sermon illustration. He said, you want to know who the unknown God is? I'll tell you who he is. He, and then he went on and he used that as the unknown God is God. The only God. And he, and, uh, but, but what a great illustration uh, of polytheism. They, they believed in a bajillion different gods and that's not biblical. There are not a hundred different gods or a thousand different gods. There's one God and it is God of the Bible. Theism is a belief in a, in a personal God um, as a creator or the preserver or the ruler. And then mon monotheism is a view that teaches there is but one God, uh, what we would fall under as Christianity or Judaism uh, would fall under that category, people who believe in one God. Those are just uh, some different um, systems of theology uh, theories about God. So now we move on and uh, let's take a look at some scriptures uh, that prove that there is one God. Uh, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 34 and for verse 14, Thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 6, 13, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him and shalt swear by his name, yea, uh, shall, no, shall not... Ye, okay. 
Ye shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Uh, this one uh, verse in Isaiah 44, 6, I like. I like it when uh, it's very simple and uh, very straightforward and easy to understand uh, because I like to take things very, very simplistically, very basic, very black and white. Isaiah 44, 6 says this, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. That's pretty straightforward. That's an awesome verse. Uh, he said, I was, I was here first, I'm, I'm last, and there's nothing in between, and I am the only God. And I love that verse, and that is a very, uh, uh, very straightforward proof that God is the only one. There's only one God. Acts 17, 24, and that, uh, and that the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth... Uh, to all life and breath and all things. And that was a continuation from the passage now that we looked at just a moment ago. And then lastly, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Well, those are just some verses and proofs that God is the only, the only true, true God. Now let's move on. We've looked at some uh, systems of theologies or theories of God. We've looked at some verses that prove, uh, according to the Bible, that there's only one God. Let's look at some attributes of God uh, that are found in the Bible. What we're going to do is we're going to do a, a, a Bible drill because we have A through J. How many ever that is? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Ten. Perfect. Perfect ten. Uh, we're going to do uh, 10. Uh, we'll do the Bible drill. And then if you uh, find the verse first, if you would be willing to read the whole verse, we'll give the point and we'll move it on. And we'll, that'll just help break it up a little bit so it's not quite so heavy. Uh, so Bible's up. We're going to go first to 44.6. Sound uh, like familiar numbers. We may have looked at it just a moment ago. 44.6. Go Isaiah. The first attribute of God, according to Isaiah 44, 6, is exclusivity. I sometimes try to add another T in that word. Exclusivity, meaning he's exclusive. He's the only one. He is one of a kind. There is no other before, after, coming after. He is the only one. Uh, next, 42, 2. Bible's up. 42, 2. Job. I can do every. He can do everything. He's omnipotent. Uh, the when I remember every time I see this word, I don't read it omnipotent. I read it omnipotent because when I was a teenager, probably seventh or eighth grade, we were sitting upstairs in the in the brown wooden benches. So that shows you how long ago it was. And uh, Kurt Goldsboro was teaching us. Uh, the attributes of God, omnipotence, omniscience. And when he got to this one, he read it omnipotent, the word potent, meaning powerful. He's all powerful. Uh, he has all power. And that is an attribute of him that proves that he's the only one. Uh, here we go. Let's go another one. 55 9. Bible's up. 55 9. Isaiah. My ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God transcends man in every way. God transcends man in every way. That's an important attribute of God. Bible's up again, 5-7. Five, 5-7, seven. Five, seven, first, John. I love that. I love that verse uh, where it uses Jesus Christ not as God the Father, God the Son, but God and 
the Word. The Bible says in John 1, 1, beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, talking about Jesus. Uh, God is triune. Uh, he is three in one. How does that work? I have no idea. You have to ask God about that. But he is one God in three persons. And we have to take that at his word. Uh, 424. 424. John. Does finding it on a phone, is that a cheater or no? I'm just kidding. <laughs> John 4, 24 is here. I'm just kidding. Uh, those that God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit. God is a spiritual being. God is a spiritual being. Uh, let's do another one. 3240. 3240. Deuteronomy. That's pretty straightforward, what God was saying there. He's eternal. I live forever. Another one of those verses that even I can understand. Very straightforward, very simple. Uh, we're going to go 3 6. 3 6. Malachi. Malachi. I know, just kidding. Malachi. Just keeping you on your toes. I change not. God is changeless. And praise the Lord for that. Uh, we don't have to uh, wake up every morning and wonder if we want to please God, what it is that he wants today, or has he changed? He ain't going to change. And uh, we can rest. That gives us great confidence uh, that once we know what God wants, then we just keep repeating that every day. And God does not change. The world changes. Men change. God doesn't change. 6-3. Uh, Six three. We just came off a of three six. Now we're going six three. Isaiah six three. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, holy, holy. God is holy. God is holy. Two more. Four eight. Four eight. First John. Miss Carol knew what that was. She said, God is love. God is love. And lastly, 548, 548, Matthew. God is perfect. God is perfect. And uh, all of these things, and of course we could name uh, many, many more that God is, but this just gives us an insight onto attributes of God. Now we're going to move down to contrasting concepts of God by various groups. We're going to look at some, some, uh, some common uh, religious groups. We're going to look at and just a couple bullet points of some main things that they believe. And we're going to see how after seeing some different theories of theology, after seeing what the Bible says about God, after seeing what the Bible says about attributes of God, how all of these different religions have very vastly different ideas of what they believe and very vastly different th theologies of just religion in general. We're going to see, uh, trying to answer this question, don't all religions basically worship the same God? We're going to see if, if they all line up. Mormons or uh, Latter-day Saints, they believe that God the Father was once a man. Uh, that he has a physical body. Uh, they believe that there is no trinity. They believe that there is a heavenly mother. Uh, and they believe that worthy men may become gods one day themselves. That would be the Mormons or the Latter-day Saints. Move down to Jehovah's Witnesses. I was, I think I was telling my wife the other day, I said, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, they don't believe as we do according to the Bible. But what a great 
name for a group. If I said, if anything, if we weren't ever called the Baptists, that would be an awesome uh, religious group to be called because that's truly what we are. We are Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, but we're not Jehovah's Witnesses, all right? So don't pull me on that. Don't put that in the bulletin. Pastor Rogers, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. We are, but we aren't. But are we? No, i <laughs> They believe uh, that uh, there was no trinity and that Jesus was the first thing that Jehovah created. That, of course, does not uh, coincide with what we know. If we know that Jesus and God's word are synonymous, then if God had to create Jesus, then that would debunk a lot about the Bible that we believe, and, and it just spirals from there. Christian science. God is, now here, there's going to be two that you may, may dismiss or like, oh, well, these aren't really religious groups. Two uh, religious groups that are coming in very, very, very strong are Christian science or whatever you want to call it, Mother Earth, Earth Science, and uh, the, a New Age movement. And these are going to be the next two. And you're going to see what they believe. And really, it's just a conglomeration of a bunch of uh, religions all poured into one that really takes a lot of the negative qualities of all of them and puts them all together. Christian science. God is the impersonal principle of life, truth, love, intelligence, and spirit, and that God is all that truly exists and matter is simply an illusion. So God is the earth. God is us. And all of the earth and everything that we see, everyone that we see is just a manifestation of God in some way, uh, but he's not a personal and he has no control over anything. God is just everything. A New Age movement, which is a mixture of uh, Hindu teachings, Native American teachings, astrology, and Buddhist writings. They believe that everything and everyone is God. I'll read that again. Everything and everyone is God. God is an impersonal force or principle, not a person. People have an unlimited inner power and need to discover it. That's why there's such a big movement towards self-discovery and finding your inner strength. Why is that? Because according to the New Age movement, everyone and everything is God, meaning you are a part of God in some way, meaning you have all power, access, in, inwardly, and all you have to do is just discover yourself and look inwardly and meditate and and tap into that power that you already have in you. That's not biblical, and and that really, uh, I believe, is going to be the teaching in the end because uh, it is such a prideful thought, is it not? It's such a prideful statement. We we talked a few uh, weeks ago about the sin of Sodom. What was the first one? Pride. And when you when you men don't need God anymore because they will say, I am God. All I have to do is discover God inwardly. That's where we're going to be in a huge, huge uh, mess. Judaism uh, does not believe in the Trinity. Uh, God is uh, personal and all-powerful, eternal, uh, and uh, compassionate. So they, they're pretty close, uh, but they don't believe in the Trinity. Uh, Hinduism, God is the absolute. He's a universal spirit. Everyone is part of God, which their God is Brahman. Just like drops of the sea, just like a drop is part of the sea, we are a part of God in some way. People uh, worship manifestations of Brahman in different ways. Whatever uh, the manifestation of God is to you, that is God. Uh, people are God, they're just unaware of it. Buddhism uh, is mostly an atheistic viewpoint. Some people speak of uh, Buddha as excuse me, as the universal enlightened uh, consciousness uh, of God. The goal of uh, life as a Buddhist is nirvana, uh, which is a, a place where it can eliminate all cravings or desires. It's not that God's given you the victory over sin. You can just go somewhere where there are no temptations and then you won't sin anymore in a perfect place called nirvana. And you have to go through the eightfold path uh, to free Buddhists from desiring anything. And lastly, we'll look at Islam. God is, uh, of course, Allah in, uh, in Islamic belief. Uh, God is one. God revealed the Quran to Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. That right there is just interesting in and of itself. God is a uh, severe judge, uh, seldom depicted as loving. Jesus, that's why we see a lot of, of uh, Islamic ties to, to the different terrorist uh, groups and movements, because 
uh, God is a very uh, violent, uh, judgmental God in this, uh, in, in this belief. Now, Jesus is the, only, is the only one of 124,000 prophets sent by God to various cultures, and Jesus is not divine or God himself. So that is just some different uh, beliefs of some, some main uh, religious groups. So the conclusion, all this information, all of the major religious groups in the world have a very different concept of God. Remember, we're trying to answer this question. Don't all religions basically worship the same God? Not only are there some variations of who God is from religion to re religion, but it's a vast array of contradicting religious heresy. God cannot, according to some of the religions we just looked at, God uh, is both eternal and finite. He's both personal and impersonal. He's the creator and part of his creation. He's, he has a physical body and he doesn't have a physical body. He's omnipotent and subject to his creation. Uh, he exists as a trinity and he exists as a, uh, doesn't exist as a triune or he doesn't exist at all. So just there is no cohesion whatsoever from religion to religion. And those who claim that we all basically worship the same God are really displaying their ignorance of the teachings of various religious groups. Someone who says, well, we all just basically worship the same God, just go through that list right there and what they believe, you'll realize, oh, we don't all worship anything near uh, the same thing at all. So what should we believe? What should we listen to? Well, how do we know that what we believe is, is truth? You ever think that? You ever wonder, what if... Like, what if the Bible isn't true? Just spitball that for a second. What if we, maybe, what if, what if Islam is the correct religion and, and we're just as blinded in whatever we're following as they are and what they're following? How do I know that? Well, first of all, we know that that's where faith comes in. Uh, one thing that I would say even above faith that is a proof to me is the working of God and the Holy Spirit in my life. I have seen God transform me and my life. I have seen God work in the lives of other people that has no other explanation but that God is in it. And the Spirit of God is working in me and in the lives of other people. And if for no other reason but that alone, what God has done for you in your life ought to be a proof that God is God, that we are following the true God, that we are following the correct Word, the Word of God, the Bible. But what do we believe? What do we follow? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And that's what we need to do. Uh, Dad said it often. Uh, the, the, the Word of God and, the, and, and uh, the teachings of God, they don't need to be rethought. They just need to be retaught. And it may get a time where it seems like we're just kind of in a cycle of, okay, well, we're going to talk about salvation again and baptism again and soul winning again and tithing again and... and uh, and yeah, we are, and we're just going to keep we're just going to keep reminding ourselves of it uh, until uh, we die or he comes back. Because the, he says, says, "Till I come, give attendance to the doctrine." We're just going to keep following doctrine. Isaiah eight twenty to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to his word, it's because there is no light in them. This is talking about looking at what we ought to believe. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. What word? Word of God. It's because there is no light in them. So if we're going to follow the Bible, if you're going to say, I'm just going to I draw a, a line in the sand, I'm going to make a decision, I'm just going to follow the Bible. I'm going to believe everything that's in it, no matter what, I'm just going to base my faith on that. Well, if, you're, if you base your faith on that, then according to the Bible that you said you believe in Isaiah, it says, if anyone else speaks anything other than the word, that you ought not to believe it because they're speaking that way because there is no light in them, talking about the light of Jesus Christ. So we have to be solid in the fact that we're going to follow the Bible and then only follow the Bible, not follow, oh, well, I like a little bit of this. Uh, the, the following God is not like a spiritual buffet. You can't go to all different religions and say, ooh, I like, I like that you can do this, and I, ooh, I like that you can, no, it's just, it's just uh, one thing. Uh, same thing over and over again, but you have to stick with it. The modern uh, day Bible believing Christian is faced with the choice then to stand firm on Bible doctrine or compromise for the sake of unity. May God help us to stand up and boldly proclaim the truths 
of God's word. I want you to turn to one more passage, if you would. And uh, this was my favorite verse out of this whole study, although there was some great ones. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 31. We're going to look at the first, first part of this verse. I don't underline a lot in my Bible because often it distracts me when I'm reading it, but I underline the first part of this verse. Such a powerful phrase. Deuteronomy 32, 31. For their rock is not as our rock. Capital R. There's a lot of other religions. They believe a whole lot of other things. But their rock, little r, is not our rock. Capital R. The rock. The God said, upon this rock will I build my church. I'm not talking about Peter. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Our rock is something that we can place our rock solid faith in their rock is not as our rock so don't all religions basically worship the same god according as best as i know according to the bible no no they don't the only thing that any religion ought to worship and and whatever they call themselves uh whatever uh they say they believe they ought to believe the word of god and the god of the bible